Lotus Silverstone got in touch with me recently and asked whether I'd like to do a review on this. Undoubtedly the odd child of the current Exige V6 range. This is an Exige V6 Roadster with the automatic gearbox. Uh, just in case you're unfamiliar with the Exige lineup, the S is the first version of the V6 lineup, which has now been replaced with the 350 series. It is the Roadster, so that means that it is a soft top as standard. It is then missing the front splitter down here and the wing at the back. And Lotus say that is because with this bit here missing, the airflow over the car is somewhat more unpredictable and not as easily channeled as when there is a fixed roof in place. And with this roof gone, the wing on the back would not really be doing its job. So they don't put one on as standard. So, for those of you who don't know, let's have a very quick recap of what's involved. The car uses the Toyota U660 gearbox, which is the gearbox that would traditionally be connected to this engine when it is installed in the Camry. It is a torque converter automatic. It is not a robotized manual and it is not a dual clutch box. At the moment, I'm driving it in drive and with it doing its own shifting. For those purposes, it is actually very smooth and very pleasant. It is certainly miles better at being an auto box than something, say, like the BMW SMG box or indeed the Aston Martin Sport Shift as seen in the V8 Vantage S, which I reviewed recently. Now you can drive this car in normal mode, sport, race, and if you want to change gear yourself, you have paddles mounted here for you to do so. The placement of those is quite controversial. It seems very much that there is a split between people who like their paddles mounted on the wheel and people who like their paddles mounted on the column. Bizarrely, Lotus do both. In the Evora, the paddles are mounted on the wheel and in this they are mounted on the column. They are fixed, they do not move. They're fairly large and metal and they feel quite nice. Unfortunately, the action of them is really not. It's very kind of soft and indistinct. You don't really get any sort of click or confirmation from them that you have actually, you know, chosen a new gear. They simply move and then eventually the gearbox does what you've asked of it. You don't get a nice clack or any sort of feedback from it, which is a great shame because the entire car really is all about that mechanical feedback and that really is a big disappointment. That being said, the paddles in the Evora from what I recall aren't really that much better. They fall in a fairly natural place because the wheel is so small and the steering quite direct. The gear paddles are there almost always at your fingertips where they should be. The changes themselves are actually quite quick and when you're on it and you have the exhaust valve open you get a nice crack from the exhaust as the ignition cuts just at that moment as it changes a gear. Unfortunately, when you are in manual mode, the box mostly frustrates. Downshifts are excellent, but upshifts simply aren't. Allow me to demonstrate what I mean. Going along 4,000 RPM, 60 miles an hour, and to change up, paddle pressed. Now it's changed. Let's do that again. So here we go. It's at least a second between you pushing the paddle and the gear change actually happening. When the change happens, it's fast, but it just doesn't happen when you tell it to. It's so frustrating. Of course, this car's core character is still very much classic Exige, and in fact, in this very comfort orientated spec, I actually really, really love it. Today is the perfect day for a car like this. This car has full carpets, it's got this gorgeous diamond stitched 
quilted leather in the door and it being the roadster we of course have the roof down which makes things so much nicer and more pleasant you really can hustle this car along when you're driving in sport mode i would say the car actually does a pretty good job of changing gears on its own it gets the odd one wrong and sometimes changes on you when you're in a corner which unsettles things a little bit but the chassis is so fantastically put together it really isn't much of a problem <laughs> Am I being too harsh on this gearbox? Probably. Is it better than, say, the Aston Martin Sport Shift? Yes, yes it is, because that gearbox is dreadful when trying to be an auto around town and at low speeds, and it's not especially brilliant when you're trying to press on either. This box, at the very least, does the slow speed around town automatic thing very very well because that is its origins and no it's not particularly brilliant when you are trying to get a move on it's no DCT it's no PDK or S-Tronic but I must concede there are people for whom a manual is simply not an option and if you're one of those and you're considering one of these certainly don't stop you can definitely definitely still enjoy this car with the auto box and in fact I would almost say that the combination of auto and roadster almost makes the most sense of course the great thing with the Exige is that whether you get a coupe or a roadster you can just change between the two anyway so there we have it the Exige auto roadster better than a manual coupe no different yes enjoyable of course it is thanks for watching and this very car is currently available for sale from lotus silverstone so if you've enjoyed looking and listening to this lovely thing get in touch with amy thanks for watching bye bye oh you're still here well as i have your attention I've been told that around 84% of the people watching my videos haven't subscribed yet. Is that you? If you think you want to subscribe, click this button here or the one somewhere down here that says subscribe. Or if you're still on the fence and want to watch some more of my content, you'll find suggestions for videos here, here and here. What are you waiting for? Go on, keep watching.